On the screen is my Huddle Sports Code Basketball code window. Now I'm making a mini series around this code window about the code window setup, the code window design, the code window in-game flow, and all those videos will be in the description below. But just for this video, I'm gonna go through the timeline as well as the matrix to see what sort of data this window generates. So we're not gonna really look at the window that much, we're just gonna look at the timeline. Now for this example, I'm gonna use Ohio State versus Michigan. And the first two rows that you're gonna have, now I've kind of organized these rows to look like this. Sports code doesn't generate rows in this sort of a neat order. But the first two rows you're gonna have are the Ohio State offense and the Ohio State defense. Then in that, after that, we've got all the KPIs or key performance indicators or actions for one of the teams, Ohio State in this example. Then you've got all those same rows for the opposition. And then at below, you've got all your individual players for the home team or the team that you're coding for. So within all of these instances right here, we've got quite a lot of data um, in terms of label information. And if we go into the matrix, we can see all of that. So every position row has a lot of information in it. So in every position row, you've got the time of game. So one, two, three, fourth quarter. Now, obviously, college basketball isn't in a quarter system, but this is just like made like this. So, you know, you can have NBA teams use this window or if you're using, um, even if you are in a half system, you can still break the game down further for that more fine detail. Then you've got defenses. So man, press and zone. Position length, fast break and transition, both for, for both teams. Now, obviously, every uh, position that isn't in fast break and transition is considered a half um, a half court position. Position situation, so we've got out of timeout, baseline out of bounds, end of game, from, off, from offensive rebound, so that's positions after your team has secured an offensive rebound, and then sideline out of bounds. Plays, now I only coded one play for this particular game, just pick and roll, because I don't know the intricate actions of Ohio State and Michigan, so I've just coded the one play, but if you had you know, all your plays, and I have up to 24 play slots, they'd all be down here in the play group players so this is every single position that say these players were in so every offensive and defense position Justin Aarons was in or any every offensive and defense position uh, Liddell is in so you can kind of filter positions by what players were in them as well as see a player's contribution throughout an entire game position tag now these are tags that were basically position enders or position starters or just actions within positions so you want to see a position that included a high state fouls or steals or turnovers from each either team. These are the parts that you would go to. Player KPI, so these are every action that players from the home team did. So every player assist, block, defensive foul, rebound, offensive foul, offensive rebound, steal, and turnover. And then after that, we get to the shooting information. Now the shooting information goes into both the position rows, the team KPI rows, as well as the individual player rows. So in every shot, we've got the shot result, which is self-explanatory. The player who made the shot, just from the home team for the opposition, we've just got a player called opposition. Shot location, so the corners, the elbows, the posts, the wings, middle two, middle three, paint and rim. Then we've got the shot quality, contested and uncontested. Now that's up to the coder what, can, uh, what counts as a contested and uncontested shot. And then shot type, so breakaway, catch and shoot two, catch and shoot three, cut, drive, floater, hezzy jumper, hook shot, off the dribble, post up, put back and roll man. Handler, we've got for pick and roll plays, we also code the handler and the roller. So in this case, we've only got three handlers that handled the ball in this game and then three rollers. So Walker, Wesson, Washington were the handlers at some point in this game. Then rollers, we've got Wesson, Liddell, and Wesson. Wesson's are brothers. And then obviously I've just put these at the bottom because you're not really going to be watching much footage of free throws, but they're there if you want them. So free throws for either team and then the individual uh, player free throws from the home team. Now that seems like a lot of data to capture all at once, and it seems like you'd be coding for ages after a game. However, just because of how the code window is designed, and we'll get into a code window design video in the description if you want to see that, but because of how it's designed, all this information is captured by the time the coaches walk into the locker room after a game. So you would code the game, and then by the time they've shook in the opposition's hands, walked into the locker room, your timeline's going to look like this with all that detail already there for them to watch on the plane or bus ride back to your home stadium. So that's my code window timeline. And again, if you want to watch how this window is set up, how it works in flow, how it's designed, watch the videos below in the description. Other than that, thank you for watching and hope you learned something.